welcome back to the Beach Bum Book Room. I am Tiffany. I'm so glad you all found me again today. We show us all about cozy mysteries and romance books. And today I'm doing my March cozy mystery wrap up. I had some great mystery reads in March, but it's sad. The wrap up for March is sad because that means also the end of March Mystery Madness, which was so much fun this year. I am so thankful that the last couple of years I've been invited to host and this year the theme was so much fun for me. I was going to dress up one more time, but I have a play coming up in about two hours and so I'm running a little low on time because otherwise, bam, I might have to make one more video for March Mystery Madness just so I can dress up. I had so many more costumes to wear. Okay, it, it was just amazing. I look forward to it every year. I'm so thankful that I've been asked to, like I said, co-host. And I, I just, it's just one of my favorite events on, on booktube. So let's get into it. Let's talk about all the mysteries I read in March in three, two, one, go. Before we get started, I just want to say, please hit the like, subscription, notification bell. All three of those help us out tremendously. I can't thank you enough for coming and checking out my videos and having people to talk about Cozy Mysteries with. You know, it's easy to find people to talk about books with, but I feel like Cozy Mysteries is one of those, you know, niche areas that uh, still a lot of people, when I tell them I'm cozy mystery reader, they don't know what I'm talking about. So I thank you so, so much. I'm so appreciative. Please remember that support is absolutely free. It costs nothing to hit any of those buttons, but it helps us out tremendously. The first book I finished was so timely. It's Murder at the Blarney Bash. This is the, I think it's the fifth book. And the Beacon Bake Shop Cozy Mystery Series by Darcy Hanna. This features Lindsay, and Lindsay owns a bakery and a lighthouse in Michigan. It's a great place for a cozy. It is St. Patrick's Day, so like I said, perfect timing. And Lindsay's boyfriend, Rory, her his uncle has moved from Ireland and is opening up this Ireland gift shop. And he, everybody's so excited. They're kind of planning this grand opening, all of this stuff. And with it being St. Patrick's Day, there's lots of stuff going on around town too. And there's this leprechaun that starts showing up. And people are like, no, he's a re, it's a real leprechaun. It's not somebody dressed up. It's a real leprechaun. And they were doing some, you know, not so nice things and stuff like that. Well, unfortunately, the leprechaun is caught, found dead and Lindsay's going to figure out what is going on. I gave this three stars. I really enjoy this series. It's a nice, solid series for me. There, She has, um, like most cozies, has a dog. However, what's unique about this one is the dog is a big Newfoundland named Welly. And he's just so lovable. And like, I just... I just picture him like this big old, like, I don't know. I love him so much. I love Welly so, so much. I really love the side characters. However, I will say that her best friend Kennedy comes back in this book and she was a little more intolerable in this book because she was just kind of mean. And I don't mind sassy and I don't mind like spunky, but mean is a whole different ball game and I just don't do mean well. And I felt like she really was at that line. Um, the cover is adorable on this one. I definitely will continue this series. I always try to stay caught up, so I'm ready for the next one. I love that most of this series... I think all of them, but maybe one are like right around holidays or are they all holiday? Hold on. Let me just look. Why am I saying stuff that I don't know for sure? All right. So I'm back. So not all of them, but they are very centered around holidays. The first one is just a general introduction. The second one is a Christmas book. So good. Rated four cups of coffee. The third one is at a blueberry festival, but not necessarily a specific holiday. I gave it three cups of coffee. The fourth one was murder at the pumpkin pageant. Gave it four cups of coffee. Of course, it revolves around Halloween. And then this one is, of course, St. Patrick's Day. I love the covers on these. So fantastic. Mm. Good start to the month. Next up, I read Oh my gosh, I loved this so much. I gave it five cups of coffee. It's the third book in the Berry Basket series, which is on my SAS list. It's called Killed on Blueberry Hill. This is by Sharon Farrow. I gave this, like I said, five huge cups of coffee. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this also takes place in Michigan, which I just love Michigan for cozies. Okay, our main character, Marley, she owns a berry basket. Picture anything berry and she sells it. 
berry bakery items, berry salsa, syrup, candles, potpourri. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> oh my gosh. And there's going to be a, what would they call it? The Blueberry Blowout Festival. And her fiance, Ryan, is one of the families that has a big fruit orchard um, in the area. And he has a competitor who he does not like, but like, not just doesn't like, he has a hatred for this other family. And they are kind of like the biggest fruit orchard and supplier for, they do like national type of stuff. And Ryan is very env envious of some of the things that they have. And at this uh, Blueberry Blowout Festival, there is rides, there are competitions like tug of war and pie eating and this and that. And Ryan is insistent that his family beat this other family in these competitions. I don't know why that really means anything to, except for maybe his ego, but alas, he was very insistent. He makes Marley do the um, pie eating contest. She's not real thrilled, but she's okay with it. But then right afterwards, he's like, hey, you're going to go do tug of war with us. She's like, um, I don't want to get sick. I just ate an entire pie in a pie eating contest. He's like, well, you're going to. It was very like, ugh. I, yeah, so it ends up that during the tug of war, which was his family, Ryan, our main character, Marley's fiance, and the family that he's jealous of, they were going head to head. And the other guy in the family really does like to, you know, get people going and kind of mess with people and this and that. And um, he was messing with Ryan a little bit and um, after the competition happens there, well, first of all, during the tug of war, something happens and there's, um, accusations of cheating going on this and that. So afterwards they're heading back over to the rides and the guy from the other family, his family was sponsoring the biggest ride there, which was like something that like lifts you up and drops you and he's getting on it. And he like yells something at Ryan about like, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember if it, it's just something to get his attention and him and his wife go up and they go down. And when they get down, he is deceased. Well, he was diabetic and, um, he took place, took part in the, uh, pie eating contest, which, you know, obviously for a diabetic, um, might not be the best of choices. I, I don't know how people all regulate their sugar. I'm just talking about according to the book. And then he was also drinking um, as well as doing some other stuff while still um, giving himself uh, diabetic medicine, which at first is said that was the reason for his death between the drinking, the, um, the pie eating, and um, then still taking his medicine. However, it's proved later on that maybe somebody tampered with his medicine. And so we're trying to figure out what's going on. I'm not going to lie to you. I gave this five cups of coffee. Fantastic. Best in the series. I am loving this series. I highly recommend it. It's very underrated to me. Um, I was actually rooting for either Ryan to be um, the victim or then when he wasn't the victim, I was kind of rooting for him to be the killer. Not going to lie. Really dislike the guy. Oh my gosh. I can't recommend this book enough, but you have to read the other two too. But Holy Moly was number three by far the best in the series. So, 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 so good. Next up, I read Murder at Everham Hall. This is the first book in the Marius Quinn Cozy Mystery series by Benedict Brown. I read this for my Janelle's M&M game. If you were following March Mystery Madness, if you followed it for a few years, of course, you know Janelle from Too Fond of Books. Her channel is still up. Go check out her amazing video. She was an incredible person. We lost her, um, and I hope that we did it justice um, as a tribute to her for March Mystery Man this year. She, uh, you can just feel her love for books in that channel. It was absolutely, she was absolutely amazing. She was absolutely amazing. So she always did this game for March Mystery Madness. Um, it was an M&M game where she made like a um, key where like green M&M was um, a place and 
it might be a specific place like a um, hotel. And then um, the red was, um, I don't know, a characteristic or a character or a theme like culinary or something like that. And then you had to find something that matched for your TBR. So I played that game because when she uh, was doing March Mystery Madness, the first year I co-hosted, I uh, messaged her and I said, hey, can I play this game with you? Because I love it. I love games. I love games. I'm really a, a child at heart. <laughs> And she said, of course, of course, please do, please do. She was so encouraging and so just welcoming and like, yeah, absolutely. And so every year I would kind of play along with her and I just wanted to continue that. And um, I just hope that we did her justice because she was absolutely incredible. So for this, uh, this was one of the reads that I pulled for the M&M game. I used Skittles, but that's besides the point. <laughs> okay, so this one... Our main character, Marius, he is a novelist and he wrote a great first book and then he got all these advancements and then he's like got writer's block, can't figure out how to write the second book, what to write about, all of those things. And he runs into the, well, he's literally like on the ground, like, it's like described as like almost like a temper tantrum for an adult, like on the sidewalk, the whole bit. And this woman comes up and she's like, are you okay? And he looks up and it's this woman that he grew up with and they had been friends since they were children. And then slowly their relationship became more and more romantic. And then he had to leave for war and they decided to go their separate ways. He's still very much in love with her and he sees her and um, they're kind of catching up. And she says, hey, I'm having this Christmas, New Year's Eve party and you should come this that and so he does and it's at this amazing mansion and they get snowed in and then a murder happens it was like a closed room in a blizzard oh my gosh that in itself y'all know that i love the cold weather cozies i love them because that's the only one way i want to experience the cold that's why i love them so much and i really like closed circle uh, mystery. So I really, really, really loved this one. I'll definitely continue the series, but it might have been more about that particular book than this series as a whole. But I'm going to give number two a shot and we'll see how it goes. Next up, also for the Eminem game, I read Better Off Wed. I'm going to put it right here. This was for the two, the nines, because of course she's in a wedding dress. This is the first book in the Annabelle Archer series by Laura Durham. I gave this five cups of coffee. I absolutely loved it. So Annabelle has a wedding company and she is a wedding planner and she is putting together this wedding and there is a bridezilla, but it's not the bride. It's the bridezilla's mama. I don't know what she would be called. I'm trying to think of what they would might call her. Mamazilla. Let's call her Mamazilla. It, she was a Mamazilla. Um, and she did somebody wrong because she ends up dead and Annabelle's trying to figure out what's going on. I loved this. It was so much fun. I love to see the planning aspect. I loved the, um, caterer that she, um, worked with that she was friends with. Although there were points where I thought he was a little over the top in reaction. Um, but I really, really enjoyed him. I think his name is Richard. Um, I can't wait to read the next one in this series. It was so much fun. Next up, I read the fourth book in the Ghostly Southern series. <laughs> this is by Tanya Kappas. I love this. I've loved every book in this series. It might be, it might be my favorite series by her. Um, I've liked everything that I've read. I really enjoy the uh, bakery series by her. I know it's only two books. It's written under Mamie Bell, but I highly recommend it. It's a Southern Baker, I think is what the actual series is called. And this one, of course, I love her Campers and Criminals. I like her Holiday Junction series, but this might be my favorite. I'm going to just read the synopsis because it sums it up better than anything that I could say because I was dying. Okay, so it says, this psychic undertaker knows there's only one cure for the bad case of murder. Fourth in the cozy paranormal mystery series following a ghostly demise. And then it starts. It says, I told you I was sick. Reads the headstone above Mamie Sue Preston's grave. She actually wrote that because she was a hypochondriac. <laughs> 
She was the richest woman in Sleepy Hollow, Kentucky, and also the biggest hypochondriac. Ironic, considering someone killed her and covered it up perfectly. And how does Emmy Lou, or sorry, Emma Lou, Emma Lee, how does Emma Lee, I'm so sorry, I got too distracted by the hype, <laughs> the headstone. Okay, how does Emma Lee, proprietor of the Eternal Slumber Funeral Home, know all this? Because Mimi Sue's ghost told her, that's how. <laughs> and she's offering big bucks to find the perp. The catch is, Mimi Sue was buried by the Reigns family's archival Burns Funeral Home. Would the Burns stoop to framing Emma Lee's granny with an enterprising maid, a penny-pitching ma uh, pastor, and a slimy Lexington lawyer, all making a killing off Mamie Sue's estate? Emma Lee needs a teammate like her dreamboat boyfriend, Sheriff Jack Henry Ross, because with millions at stake, snooping around is definitely bad for Emma Lee's health. It was fantastic. Five cups of coffee, like I said. I, I highly recommend this series. I'm not a big paranormal reader. You guys know that. But this one is absolutely so funny. Next up, I read the third book in the Spice Isle Bakery series, Coconut Drop Dead. This is by Olivia Matthews. This features Lindsay and Lindsay and her family open a West Indies bakery in Little Caribbean, New York. Oh my gosh. The food descriptions in this book are heavenly. I love, love that region of cooking, but, and I've said this in many videos, I don't know if I've ever had bakery items. It's all been savory stuff, but oh my goodness, the bakery descriptions are mouthwatering. I might have to try some of the recipes. I might have to modify them. I'm deathly allergic to coconut, coconut drop dead right here. I shouldn't joke about that because it's funny. Okay, so... We're finally having the Caribbean American Heritage Festival because we had been kind of building up to it in the other books. So I was so excited to see the Caribbean American um, Heritage Festival. And her family at one point in one of the other books was told they couldn't be a part of it. They did get to end up being um, at the festival and um, supplying um, items from their bakery. Well, there is this reggae band that's playing and the reggae band is starting to really get some uh, following and kind of um, recognition in the music business and the main singer, Camille, dies. And so Lindsay's trying to figure out what was go what's going on. It's also, um, Camille was also having maybe somewhat of a relationship with, um, is it Lindsay? It's Lindsay's cousin. It's not her brother. So I think it's her cousin and he's kind of always been like a, uh, a womanizer and never want to settle down. And he seems to be really into this woman. Um, and so Lindsay feels like she really wants to help him find closure for what happened to Camille. I really enjoyed this. I gave it 3.5 cups of coffee. I read somewhere, um, on, from Olivia Matthews that this series was over, which saddens me, but I will say that one of the reasons that I rated it 3.5, even though I really enjoyed it and the premise is absolutely incredible, I felt like Lindsay's character was a lot at some points. I mean, she was very, um, there were just times where her reactions to things um, were were very frustrating. They were, they were over the top and... Um, I think that it was supposed to be like, well, she was trying to stand up for herself, which I like to see, but the way it came across was she didn't get her way, so she was going to throw a fit. I'm just telling you how I saw it. I still, I love the series, and I interviewed Olivia Matthews, and she is the sweetest, and I would definitely continue with this series if it continued, and if she did it on her own, I would support it. I would continue reading it because I did enjoy it, but I do think Lindsay's character was um, somewhat frustrating at some points. Next up, I read Public Anchovy number one. This is the third book in the Deep Dish Pizza Cozy Mystery Series by Mindy Quigley. I gave this five cups of coffee. I loved this installment. I feel like this series gets better and better. This one really hit the spot for me for numerous reasons. Let me just tick them off for you. It was a um, closed mystery because they were doing a prohibition-themed fundraiser. 
I love that time period. I love reading about prohibition. I was so excited. That is an amazing theme. And they were doing it at this mansion and it's winter and they get str everybody gets stranded there. They have to all stay there. Yes, yes, yes. And then, of course, somebody ends up dead. I really like this because um, Capone, Calvin Capone, um, the detective who our main character, I can't even think of our main character's name. Delilah, of course. Delilah's had somewhat of a, you know, start of a relationship. She doesn't really know what is going on. He is in the picture and we get to meet his mom who is a singer and that was really fun. That was really fun. I absolutely love this. And of course, someone um, is killed and they are all stuck together with the murderer and yeah, there was some like more intense scary parts. There's uh, a scene with her best friend that I was like, my heart was going I don't know, whatever, <laughs> fast. It was going fast. Um, it was really intense. I didn't expect that. Five cups of coffee. It was so great. I can't wait for the next one. Next up, I read The Great Witch's Baking Show. This is the first book in the Great Witch's Baking Show series by Nancy Warren. Of course, it is a play on the Great British, British Bake Off. And I gave it 3.5 cups of coffee. There were times where I thought it was a little too paranormal for me. If you love paranormal and you like the Great British Bake Off, I highly recommend this series. I'm still going to read number two just to see how number two goes. But there were just points in this one where I was like, hmm, I don't know if that's too cozy for me or too paranormal for me. But let me tell you. So our main character, she, Poppy, she enters the British Bake, uh, bake Off competition and it's more because she's not really a baker. It's not that she doesn't know how to bake, but she's definitely not crafting the, you know, um, it's not her forte, but she learns that maybe her family is connected and she wants to learn about her family. And along the way, one of the contestants that she had made friends with, they, they made a pat that if one of them gets voted off, the other one would be like, they were the nicest person. Like, <laughs> which I thought was really funny. Um, he ends up, well, he gets voted off and he says that there was tampering involved with his ovens and his food was burnt because of the tampering, that it wasn't on him, blah, blah, blah. Well, then he ends up dead. And Poppy's trying to figure out what's going on. She's trying to learn about her family. I give this 3.5 cups of coffee. I'll definitely continue with the series. I know a lot of people love it. I thought it was so much fun as a premise. It was it was really enjoyable. Next up, I read Night of the Living Deed. This is the first book in the Haunted Guest House Cozy Mystery Series by E.J. Kupperman. And this is on my 24 to start in 24. So I did. Yes. I loved it. I gave it four to 4.5 cups of coffee. I will definitely continue it. I don't know if I'll continue it this year because it's already April and um, yeah. <laughs> we shall see. This one was so fun. So our main character, Allison, she purchases this home on the Jersey Shore to fix up to then rent out as like a, you know, a guest house, a B&B &B sort of thing. And um, she's starting to do renovations and she meets two people, a man and a woman. And, um, they uh, well, the woman is very snarky. She doesn't like any of the design choices that poor Allison has made. And she is not so nice about telling her that she doesn't like these design choices. Um, it ends up that they are ghosts. And um, they were... Uh, so they were both, they both died on the same night and it was kind of revealed that maybe it was like a murder suicide thing. And they are like, look, this is not what happened. We were killed. Absolutely not. And so the case had been closed and Allison's trying to um, get the police to relook at the case and figure out what is going on. Partly because she wants to maybe get rid of them and partly because, um, she made a deal with them to help them out. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. I enjoyed her daughter. Her nine-year-old daughter is in the book. And um, there's a point where we learn that her daughter can see and um, 
the ghosts and hear them. And she's like, why didn't you tell me? And she's like, well, you, you didn't, you never believed me before. And she kind of, the daughter alludes to like, there were ghosts in the old house. But when I would say that you just inferred it was like an imaginary friend. It was really good, really funny, which I'm not surprised because, um, Idri Copperman is Jeff Cohen and he was the Toastmaster a couple years ago at Malice Domestic and he is absolutely hysterical. So I knew I wanted to try a series by him and it did not let me down. I will definitely probably put this on my SAS list for next year. I really enjoyed it. Next up and last book for the month, I read Resort to Murder. This is the first book in the Northwoods Cozy Mystery Series by Annie McEwen. And I'm going to give you a minute to just take in the amazing coziest cozy cover in a long time. You good? Okay. It just, oh my gosh, the fireplace, the books, the doggies and the chairs. It just looks like a cabin or a, and, and I want to go so bad. Oh my gosh. This features Emmy and Emmy was living in Chicago and she is going to visit her family in Wisconsin in Northwoods in this area of Lake Covington where her family owns, is it Cooper's Cove, Cooper's Cove Resort, this small little resort. And what happens is when she gets there, her family is so lovely. Oh my gosh. Um, her mom and dad and brother are so cute. And this boat shows up and um, basically it's this big developer. And he wants to buy several properties along the lake to turn, to build this huge resort. And, and you know, um, her family doesn't want to sell. They're like, no, we, we've li always lived here. This is, this is our family's property. It's not going to happen. Well, the one of the developers, the most nasty of the nasty, of course, ends up dead. And Emmy's trying to figure out what's going on. I loved her parents so much. I really thought that um, they showed such compassion and empathy and just like the knowledge that like, we know that he didn't do it. So it's going to work out. They were just so calm through it. They were just, they, you know, and still um, empathetic and sympathetic were needed. And I just really loved them. Oh my gosh, her friends. So she had two friends from high school that are there and they just reminded me so much. They were so relatable to the friends that I had in high school that if I could go back, that if I went back to my hometown, it would be the exact same way. They just picked up where they let off. I loved them so much. They were so willing to just jump on board and help her. And it was just so relatable to me. And I just can't say enough. The dogs are absolutely so cute and hilarious. And I, I, I can't say enough about this series. The pacing in it was like, amazing from start to finish. I was invested. I was trying to figure out what was going on. I wasn't bored. I was with, I was with her the entire time. I loved it so, so much. I gave it, I don't know, seven cups of coffee or something like that. I'm not really sure if I could do that, but this is my channel and I'm going to. <laughs> oh my gosh, y'all. That was my last book of the month. I can't say enough about the great books I read. I want to thank again to um, Elizabeth from Lizzie Phalos Books that um, originally her and Choi Tao started March Mystery Madness. I want to thank her for inviting me um, to be a co-host again this year. It was absolutely great. I'm already looking forward to next March. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's talk about favorites. I don't know if this is going to be a big shock, but my favorite was my very last read of the month, Resort to Murder by Annie McEwen. I, it might be on my favorites of this year. I know we're only in March, but I loved it that much. I highly recommend it. I can't say enough about how much I, I, I loved it. I loved everything about it. Oh my gosh. I'm going to start talking about it again. So let's move on. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to hear about your favorite of the month. Oh my gosh. Let me know what your favorite of the month was, what you're participating, participating, what you're anticipating for next month. Give me a big thumbs up for this video. And until next time, may all your future reads be five stars. Bye, everybody. <laughs>